Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. In this one, I'm going to do a showcase of three weapon builds I've been playing with that use as many new attachments as possible in the build. I haven't unlocked all of the level 3 or 4 traders yet, so there's a ton of new attachments I'm still waiting to get my hands on, but there's definitely a nice selection of new additions that you can play around with in the mid game while leveling from 15 to 30. I'll go over each build and highlight the new attachments, where you can find them, and show some gameplay for each build as well. So without any further delay, let's take a look at three weapon builds using some new attachments. First up for this video is an old classic of the Tarkov early game, the AKS-74U, an extremely common weapon in Tarkov and one of the first automatic rifles you can get a hold of. This weapon is a common drop, a cheap purchase, and with a little bit of modding actually ends up being a very versatile little CQB rifle for maps with a lot of close range fighting like Interchange, Factory, and Labs. I'll start with the new parts I used in this build, and first up is the Alpha Arms Goliath Handguard, which is sold by Mechanic Level 2 for about 5,000 rubles and gives your AK-74U a small boost to recoil reduction and ergonomics, as well as a new look which I think is really nice. This handguard also comes with 4 rails attached, allowing you to add sights, foregrips, and tactical devices without needing to buy any other rails. For the cheap price, this is actually quite a nice handguard. And the one thing I would say makes it a little less versatile than I would like is that it restricts your muzzle device options. So far, I have only found the TGPA suppressor and the default 74U compensator work with this handguard. For this build, I went with the TGPA suppressor that I found on the flea market for about 25,000 rubles for the stealth advantage, but the default compensator actually gives you better recoil reduction if that's what you're looking for. Next up for the new attachments, I added the Trigicon SRS reflex sight sold by Peacekeeper Level level 3 for about $220, and the AN PEC-2 laser, sold by Peacekeeper level 2 for about $100. At first I thought this reflex sight looked a bit clunky when I saw it in the trailer, but after using it, I must say I like it quite a bit. It has a nice field of view, a very clear dot reticle, and was easy to track targets with even on the 74U with notoriously high recoil. The AN PEC-2 is also a nice new addition in my opinion, especially for people like me who love having their laser on the top rail of their weapon. This thing has a very low profile, and most sites will have no trouble seeing over the top, but it does have a minus 5 ergonomics penalty, which is kind of a big hit to that stat. To finish off the build, I added the Zenit RK1 foregrip from Skier Level 2 for about 12,000 rubles for its high recoil reduction, and the Tapco Saw Style FDE pistol grip, sold by Peacekeeper Level 2 for about $40, just to add another FDE accent to the rifle. Finally, I just added the GP25 rubber pad from Proper Level 2 to the basic stock, but for max recoil reduction, you can add the Zenit PT Classica stock from Skier Level 2. Overall, I definitely had fun using this build. It's not something you can snipe or spray people from 300 meters with, but it was a blast to run around interchange with, and the new look for the AK-74U is a welcome addition in my opinion. This next build can be used with an M4 or ADAR and is meant to be a versatile medium to close range rifle for patrolling maps like Shoreline and Customs where you need a little bit of range to scout for enemies but also need to be effective at close range if necessary. <laughs> 
First off, I added the KAC URX 8-inch handguard sold by Peacekeeper Level 3 for about $170. This handguard kind of serves as an upgraded version of the KAC RIS handguard with a slight boost to recoil reduction. You will need to add the MK12 low-profile gas block to use this, but thankfully it's now sold by Peacekeeper Level 2 and Mechanic Level 2, making M4 modding in the early game way easier. The URX comes with several rails on it by default and is also the first handguard I have found that allows you to add rail covers for a small ergonomics boost and extra operator points. I think the extended version of this handguard would look cleaner on a long barreled rifle like the ADAR, but I haven't unlocked it and couldn't find it on the flea market either, so I was stuck with the 8 inch version. Onto the handguard, I added the AN PEC 2 laser from Peacekeeper Level 2, just like with the AK 74U, and a rail cover on the sides I'm not using. For the grip, I tried it with a few different options. First, I used the Magpul RVG grip, sold by Peacekeeper Level 3 for about $70. This is a great grip that has an awesome balance between recoil and ergonomics, so I find myself using it quite often. However, I also tried out a few raids with the KAC URX stopper panel, which is basically a super cheap angled foregrip that only fits onto this handguard. It gives a small boost of 1% to recoil control and 3 to ergonomics, but for the price of just a few thousand rubles, I think it's a pretty efficient upgrade. For my sight, I went with the newly added Monstrum Compact Prism 2x scope, sold by Jaeger Level 2 for about 30,000 rubles. This scope has a very low profile and a really clean reticle, and I find the 2x magnification makes it quite versatile as well. It's not perfect for close range or for long range sniping, but if you can adapt and position yourself well, this scope is really handy and gives you just enough range to scout while being low power for those close range shots. You might consider adding a canted sight using the MPR45 mount from Peacekeeper Level 3, but I found no problems using it without a backup sight. I also put it on top of a LaRue Picatinny riser to get over top of the laser. The last new attachment I added to this build is the Magpul CTR stock, which is basically an MOE carbine stock with the rubber butt pad already attached to it. The stats aren't quite on par with the MOE setup, but it gets close and lets you achieve the same look on your rifle. However, this stock doesn't seem to be sold by any traders I've unlocked yet, so if you can't find one for a good price on the flea market, the MFT BUS stock, which is about $80 from Peacekeeper Level 3, is a great second choice. I also added the KAC QD Compensator from Peacekeeper Level 2 and the NT4 Suppressor, which I've been seeing on the flea market for 20,000 rubles or less at some points. I had a lot of fun creeping around the bushes with this build, and honestly, I can see myself using it even more when I unlock the extended version of the URX handguard. Last, but certainly not least, we come to the MP5, a classic of the Tarkov early to mid game that just never seems to go out of style. While perhaps not as effective late game as most assault rifles, the MP5 nevertheless shreds in the early game when everyone is running low armor and you seldom see helmets with face shields. There's a few new handguards for the MP5 in this patch, but the first one I unlocked was the CAA HX5 handguard, sold by Peacekeeper Level 3 for about $140. This handguard gives you 5 rail slots and adds 3% recoil reduction and a huge plus 13 boost to ergonomics, making it a substantial upgrade even without any additional attachments. I added the MFI HK mount from Peacekeeper Level 2 for about $80, so I could fit the Trigicon SRS reflex sight, which was even better on the 
low recoil MP5. Onto the handguard, I added the Magpul RVG grip and the Steiner DBAL tactical flashlight and laser, sold by Peacekeeper Level 3 for about $130. This Steiner flashlight is actually likely to replace the X400 as my favorite tactical device because it has a nice green laser in addition to the flashlight, which I much prefer over the normal red laser beams. Finally, to suppress my MP5, I added the 3 lug threaded protector from Mechanic Level 2 and the Rotor 43 9x19 suppressor, which in my experience is almost always less than 20,000 rubles on the flea market, making it a very cheap suppressor. This build is pretty simple to put together, and when combined with the AP 6.3 9mm ammo, I was shredding through players with level 3 armor without much trouble at all. Well that about covers it for today's three weapon builds using some of the newly added attachments in patch 0.12. As a huge fan of the weapon modding in this game, I'm super excited to keep grinding and get my hands on all of the new attachments so I can make even more new builds. I'll be streaming my progress in the 0.12 patch on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise and I'd love to see you drop by so I'll leave a link for that down in the description. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.